our next speaker is uh, Terry O'Rourke. And Terry, uh, I met Terry, he probably doesn't even real, remember this, but I was in law school in 1973 and I was doing an internship and Terry was working for Mark Hill in a special pollution prosecution deal and he was showing me, I remember still this. John Hill. John Hill, I'm sorry, Mark Hill. Uh, uh, showed me the photos that he had taken of trucks that were spewing out too much pollution, right? Yeah. And uh, he's gone on to have a very distinguished career, is presently with the uh, Harris County uh, District Attorney's Office, Vince Ryan's office, uh, and serves as a special assistant county attorney, and is heading up kind of a special program for uh, County Attorney Ryan that is encouraging plaintiff's attorneys and other trial attorneys to uh, join with the county government in bringing lawsuits and under special legislation and rulings how that's come about and he's going to explain that to us. Well thank you very much and I really do appreciate it and uh, Bob thank you and uh, we have so many friends here friends of Vince Ryan and a lot of you are friends of mine and so I want to say hello and thank you. This is something that I really care about and it's good news. Uh, I'm talking about contingent fee litigation and having you be partners with us. Uh, I'm going to start out with a billion dollar lawsuit that we have. It's a contingent fee case on dioxin and that's uh, you'll, you'll see more about it. But if I can tell you briefly, when Vince got elected county attorney in 2008, uh, I had been his friend for 30 years and he asked me one thing to do is that when you're in public office, you blink your eyes and four years goes by. You can answer the phone, you have the complaint box, the squeaky wheels. But he asked me to take a look at what we should do so to say that after four years we've done something or after eight years something went on. And I went and interviewed every environmental group in Harris County in 2008. This is after Barack Obama carried Harris County and Vince Ryan and Adrian Garcia got elected. And, and the consistent answer was, you have to get the dioxin out of Galveston Bay. Now for you who don't know what dioxin is, we have right near the San Jacinto Monument near the Lynchburg Ferry, 2378 dioxin that is the most toxic substance ever invented by our species. And when Vince got elected, we went out and, and looked, I'm having trouble here. Uh, well, we'll go and looked at the site and uh, anyway, I, I'll go through this a, a little faster here and, and found that, um, that it was just incredible. We had little Hispanic children actually swimming in dioxin and, and people fishing in it and the site was owned um, by a company you may know Waste Management Inc. Anyway, let me go back to this slide. So we retained a firm, uh, a contingent fee firm, because the amount of damages were so ama amazing. Uh, Conley, Baker, and Wotrin, and you see here, uh, Ernest Wotrin on the left, and Deborah Baker on the right, and then me and Vince. Uh, this was a photo that was taken for the Texas lawyer, and uh, it, didn't get, it didn't get in there, but there was another one of, of the case that I'm gonna tell you about of this, of this case. But it's uh, a case that we filed with the Contingent Fee Council in the State District Court of Harris County, Texas versus International Paper, which is the largest paper company in the world, and Waste Management, Inc. And the theory of liability is a violation of Texas law, of essentially the environmental law, which is $25,000 a day for each and every day for each act. They have two pits. And, uh, 365 days a year times uh, $25,000 times two adds up to real money and when you start doing all the arithmetic for all the ways that they violated the law it's more than two billion dollars if we can get to the jury and of course to do this we had to have a uh, plaintiff's law firm Deborah Baker who some of you know is a, a terrific environmental lawyer but we needed to get brilliant environmental lawyers together with brilliant plaintiff's lawyers who had enough muscle power and brain power to carry the ball against 
in this case, uh, Bracewell Giuliani and Baker Hostetler and other firms. And so this case is uh, pending and set for trial uh, in early 2014, and we've got great expectations or great hopes for it. When we filed it, others took a look at it, uh, including Tammy Tran and Mark Hill and others, and found out that a lot of the people had been not just fishing or having their children swim there, but uh, 647 Vietnamese fishermen fish in that area. So they brought suit on behalf of the Vietnamese who had been exposed to dioxin, of course, with no notice and the kinds of things that uh, dioxin does to you. If you can remember Viktor Yevchenko and to think about what his face looked like, he had what's called chloracne. So we've got cases of chloracne, and it's not like something you take Clearasil to fix up. It, uh, the thing about dioxin is that its half-life is extraordinarily long. It goes into the fatty tissue in your body, and it produces, uh, well, obviously cancer, brain damage, uh, reproductive uh, problems, and this uh, astoundingly disfiguring uh, disease of the skin, chloracne. And, of course, this has been going on for more than 40 years at this site. Uh, also, the landowners in the area filed, there's a third case filed for the people who had homes. Uh, it's right there on the San Jacinto River by Interstate 10 and uh, filed their own uh, lawsuit on it, which is pending in another court. The EPA had already made a decision to turn this into a Superfund site, uh, but when Vince got elected, we went and visited with the EPA, and a lot of the people in the Galveston Bay Foundation, other people asked the question, is this going to be cleaned up in my lifetime? If any of you ever work with Superfund cleanups, they take forever, and I was grateful to accompany Vince to the EPA in Dallas as well as to Washington, D.C., to demand that they do their best to clean it up when they had an extraordinary order to get the defendants who are called probable uh, PRPs, probable responsible parties, to put in 70,000 tons of rock on top of these sites to at least stop the dioxin from continuing to bleed out. Now, there's still dioxin there and it's still going out, but it's a lot better today than it was four years ago. Anyway, as a result, we are not in the super fun case, but we are enforcing old-fashioned Texas law, and if I can show you a picture of Interstate 10, um, just south of this is the San Jacinto Monument, but in the center of this picture, you can see the, uh, the pits. This is a 1987 photo. This is dioxin that came from Champion Paper Company, a company that I sued on behalf of John Hill back in the early 1970s. And uh, yeah, these are the pits right here. And uh, they are pretty much contained today, but there's still dioxin leaking out of it. And I can just tell you if you, if you ever go fishing, just for the reasonable time, don't eat anything out of there. Uh, it, uh, the problem about dioxin is like a lot of these chemicals, it's colorless, odorless, tasteless when you experience it in the water. When we went out there, it was actually on the surface on an area that the EPA calls dioxin beach where little children and families were actually cooking hot dogs right on top of dioxin and eating it. Uh, Since then, they put up signs at our request, as you see Harris County Attorney with the EPA, explaining it's not a good place to eat fish or even be. And then we got the Galveston Bay Association to put up signs with Harris County on all the fish that you ought not eat. This is at the uh, Lynchburg Ferry just north of the San Jacinto Monument, which is the, other than the Alamo, is the largest, most popular public park in the entire state of Texas. So there's a lot of recreational use here. So the damage is real. And of course, people have been fishing here for at least 200 years. And a lot of them are people who fish as subsistence living. I mean, there are a lot of poor people who, who just fish because they need the food. And a lot of them don't speak English. A lot of them uh, don't read or write. And the signs really aren't that helpful, but they are at least one step. 
what's got to be done is we got to get all this dioxin out. The defendant's contentions ultimately, and I'm trying to be fair here, were could be described if you know the Battle of San Jacinto that went on here. Their defendant's uh, contentions are essentially me no Alamo, me no Goliad, uh, which I'm sure that as plaintiffs you're familiar with, uh, I don't want to even have to go through them here. But what was important is that while the case is pending in the district court, they sued, uh, they appealed a decision of, the, of, the, of Judge Carolyn Baker alleging that the use of contingent fee counsel was unconstitutional. Now, this is important. We believe this case that I'm going to tell you about is not just about Vince Ryan suing to clean up the worst water pollution that threatens Galveston Bay, that makes Galveston Bay essentially unusable in this current form. It's not just that, it's not environment, just an environmental case. It goes, this case applies to every city and county in the state. And um, the first court of appeals uh, issued finally on argument a really important case, and that is the case, you'll, it was on uh, July 25th, 2013, International Paper and Waste Management Inc. versus Harris County. And the court said, quite frankly, we declined the defendant's invitation to become the first court to hold against a government's ability to engage private counsel on a contingent fee basis. Uh, and the short answer is we won three to nothing on three very conservative Republican judges. They went on to say the lawyers who represent a government entity, one of the arguments of Bracewell and Giuliani and the other was that these, that the plaintiff's contingent fee lawyers were too zealous and the court said they're, <laughs> they're not necessarily permitted, they're even required to be zealous in their enforcement. Uh, it gets better. And that there is a public benefit to contingent fee agreements and that the results will be beneficial to society, so results that otherwise could not be obtainable. And, um, and, the, and the court went on to say that the use of contingent fee lawyers may allow government to pursue complex, non-frivolous litigation that could not otherwise afford. And that is our case. We have more than a hundred lawyers in our office. Harris County is not just the biggest county by we're members of the District and County Attorneys Association, and uh, as Steve Fisher was showing, hell, there are a lot of counties that don't even have a, a county, a, their county attorney doesn't even live there. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna move faster here and, and get on. Is that while defendants complain that profit motive attorneys have all the wrong incentives, the, the court looked at that and said that's true for many advocates who take any kind of case. And uh, essentially they rejected entirely the, the case. We've got uh, 10 contingent fee cases that we've had, and I'm telling you, Vince's approach is be that we go after the biggest and the baddest and the worst to have a deterrent effect. So you'll see Harris County versus Shell, um, Harris County uh, versus Pasadena Refining, um, International Paper Waste Management Inc., Harris County versus AT&T for water pollution, uh, some dry cleaners here. We filed against the MERS Corporation for the Mortgage Electronic Recording Systems. Uh, contingent fee cases uh, against the hospital, we're representing the hospital district against Southwestern Bell, against Pasadena Refining, uh, Abraham Watkins is doing on a contingent fee on a foreign trade zone failure to pay payments in lieu of taxes, suing BP, we are because of the loss of income in Harris County as a result of the oil spill, and that, that's not so speculative if you take a look what happened to uh, property taxes as a result of the BP spill. Uh, Visa, we're suing Visa and MasterCard. Uh, Beck Redden is the lead counsel on that for antitrust. So what I want to try to do in my moments ahead is to say, think about Vince Ryan and the Harris County Attorney's Office as a place that you might want to be a partner with. And it's not just our office, but uh, every city and county in the state can do it. And there are a lot of counties who just can't bring suits by themselves. They just simply don't have the authority. We're pretty strong. The only thing you really have to do under the law is get Vince to say yes and get the Commissioner's Court of Harris County to agree to it. 
Now, we have four Republicans as a five-member uh, commissioner's court, but they have been terrific with us, that they are very pragmatic and not ideological, and when it comes to showing them that they have been stolen from, or they have been polluted or ripped off in some way, they've given us the authority to go ahead. So, if you want to do business, be creative. There is a provision that the defendants found that is quite obscure, that you have to get approval from the controller's office, which comes from the anti-tobacco litigation, but we've made it through there and I've put in forms of what you have to do to get the contract language. The last session of the legislature, when, when the defendants have no way to win, what do they do? They say that it's unconstitutional, then they go to the legislature to take away your authority and bring the suit, or they take it and say that, that now Greg Abbott gets to take over your case. Well, uh, thank Commissioner Jack Cahill especially because he went up there and testified, one of our arch-conservative Republican commissioners, but he understood the law and understood this. Uh, Jack Mormon, who is a, a Republican in Precinct 2 where the pollution occurs, has been good on this. The San Jacinto pits need to be cleaned up and I want to finish up by saying that you have the Fighting Irish there to uh, help you out in this uh, case. And I'd be happy to answer this, and I hope that all of you somehow take a look. Now, the other thing is, even if you don't go to work with us on these cases, we will need you in the next session of the legislature, because I am damn sure that AT&T, International Paper, Waste Management, Baker Botts, Graceful Giuliani, all of them want to take away our authority to hire you under contingent fee. Thank you. Thank you. Terry, thank you uh, very much. And uh, I know your door is open. Somebody has a creative lawsuit uh, that they would like to bring and uh, can get permission for that. Uh, then think about doing that. And Terry may be hanging around a little bit uh, to talk about what else uh, can be done.